Coming up on Doc Type, we're back. New set, new segments, and new topics. You sent us your feedback and we listened. Today we're gonna to show you how to add images to your canvas, and we are going to deconstruct a CSS3 buttons library to see how CSS can make things shiny. So out with the old and in with the new, we are Doc Type, and so are you. Nick Pettit. And I'm Jim Hoskins. And you're watching Doc Type. Whether you're a designer that thinks JavaScript is a decaf latte, or a developer who can't tell his margin from his padding, Doc Type has the latest tips, tricks, and tools to help make you the emperor of the interwebs. So we're back. Yes. We are finally, finally back after <laughs> a couple week hiatus. It was actually a month. It was a Close long a time. Sorry to leave you hanging, but we had quite a bit to do behind the scenes. We have a fabulous new set, as you can see. It's pretty awesome, and we've been making a lot of other changes which we're going to be going through but first i just want to tell you that this episode is going to be completely ad free because we know you guys have been waiting a long time for us to come back and so we just want to show you how much we really appreciate you guys so one of the big changes we've made is we switched over to youtube for all of our videos on the website and that's where we're going to be posting our content from now on so if you head over to youtube.com user slash doctype tv you can go ahead and subscribe to our channel and we're also going to be posting a lot of bonus content and, and other stuff there. Of course all the iTunes and other subscriptions and RSS feeds will be intact but if you want to subscribe on YouTube as well you think you might enjoy the bonus content that we'll be posting. And while we're on the subject of bonus content we also post a lot of bonus content to our Facebook fan page so if you haven't headed over there yet you're going to want to direct your browser to facebook.com slash doctype. So we've got a few new uh, segments coming up. We're going to actually have a new segment today, the Doc Type Deconstruct, and we're going to be having guest interviews in the future. So we're introducing a lot of new ideas into Doc Type, and we hope that you enjoy them. Oh my yes! Also, we're up for a .NET award, which is pretty awesome, and we'd be very humbled if you would vote Doc Type for Video Podcast of the Year. So just go to the netawards.com, and on the voting page under Video Podcast, Doc Type's right there. Just give us a vote. Check it out. Thanks a lot. So today we are going to be talking about CSS3 buttons in the Doctype Deconstruct segment. And I'll be starting off with showing you how to add images to your canvas. Let's check it out. In the previous episodes, we showed you how to draw various shapes onto your canvas. Now we're gonna take it a step further and start drawing images into our HTML5 canvas. Now the HTML I'm gonna be using is a simple canvas with the IDFC and I'm adding an image into our page, which I'm giving the ID of I so I can select it easily. Now this can be any sort of image from your domain or any other domain, it really doesn't matter. So to take a look at our draw function, I'm doing the familiar thing of getting the canvas and I'm getting the context as well. But the next thing I'm doing is I'm actually getting the image object off of the page. Now I'm giving it a background of gray and this is what it looks like in the browser. I've given it a blue outline so we can see where the canvas is on the page. Now the image I'm using is just this nice barn on the field. So let's look at our first example of how we can get this image of the barn onto our canvas. So in this function, I'm being passed in the context for my canvas as well as the image object. So the very simple thing I can do is context.drawImage. Now it takes three arguments. The first is gonna be the actual image tag that we're using. And then the second and third are the X and Y position where we want to draw our image. So by doing 0, 0, I'm going to be drawing the image to the top left of our canvas at 0, 0. So now if we modify the X and the Y to 50 and 100, we can easily push the image to another part of our canvas. So we can do something like this where it's 50 from the left and 100 from the top. Now we can pass two more arguments to draw image to actually scale the image inside of our canvas. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to pass 400 and 100 after our position arguments. So the 400 is going to be the width of our image in the canvas, and the 100 is going to be the height. Now it's actually going to scale and squish the image when we actually put it in. Since I've made it much wider and shorter than it is in the real image, it's actually going to resize our image. Now there's a version of draw image that takes nine, count them nine arguments. So it's actually a little bit different. So first we're gonna take our source image like we did before. And then the first four arguments after our image are going to be SX, SY, 
as width and as height. Now what is that? Well basically we're measuring two different things. We have our source image, which is our barn image, and then we have our destination, which is our canvas. So the SX and SY allow us to crop our image. So when SX is 100, we're going to actually cut off the first 100 pixels of the left of our image, and the same with SY. And then we can choose how much of the image we actually want to place on the canvas by using the source width and the source height. Now the part of the image that we crop out of that is what's going to be placed onto the canvas. Now then we use our normal DX, DY, D width, and D height, which is for our destination, and that's actually going to place our cropped image into our canvas. So we've seen that before. So what I'm going to do in this case is I want to actually focus on the door of the barn in our image. So I've measured that out, and that starts at 150 and 80 in our image, and it's about 100 pixels wide and 130 pixels tall. Now for simplicity, I'm just going to place this piece of the cropped image at the top left of our canvas. And I'm giving it the same width and height so there will be no scaling on our cropped portion. So when we do that, we get this image right here. Now you can see it's very small because it's just a cropped piece of our picture. Now if we go into our next example, we can actually see how we can use the destination width and height as well as the destination X and Y to reposition and scale the image in our canvas. So we're still taking the same portion of our image, we're just going to scale it, make it larger, and place it in the center of our canvas. Now we can also composite multiple images into our canvas. So in this example I'm going to take this classy cow here which I've cut out and made a transparent PNG file. So what I can do in this example is I'm going to programmatically create our image tag. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an image element using the document.create method and passing it the IMG. Now once I have that element, I'm going to set an onload function. And this will be executed when the image actually loads into the page. Now it's important that we defer actually drawing the image onto the canvas until after it loads, because if we try to do it before, well there's no image to actually draw. So inside of that callback function, we're going to draw the barn image like we did before, and then we're going to just draw the cow image, and it'll be layered on top. Now since this is a transparent PNG, it'll appear to composite right on top. Now after we define our function, I'm going to set the source of our cow photo to actually make the request go, and once it loads, our callback function will be called, and will be drawn to the canvas. So when we do that, we get something like this, with our cow in the happy field of our barn. So maybe we could change the DX and DY of our cow here to make it animate and mosey across the screen. That's pretty cool. Yep, you can find the full source code at doctype.tv slash we're back. So now I am going to show you a new CSS3 library that can help you make some pretty cool buttons in a new segment we call the Doctype Deconstruct. Let's check it out. We're going to be taking a look at a CSS library called Bonbon bon that allows you to create really cool, flexible buttons using CSS3. The question is, how exactly does Bonbon bon use CSS3? And that's exactly what we're going to look at in Doctype Deconstruct. So this is the website for Bonbon, bon, where you can make sweet CSS3 buttons by just downloading the CSS file here. You can download it at lab.simurai.com slash CSS slash buttons. And one of the really cool things that Bonbon bon is doing is they're using border radius on pretty much all of their buttons here. And one of the things that you should remember when using border radius is that you don't necessarily have to apply it to every single one of your corners. You can actually apply border radius to each one of the corners individually. So the way you initiate Bonbon bon is you apply the class button to one of your anchor tags, and then you can apply various other classes to your anchor tag to create different types of effects. And as you can see here, they're using border radius to create various different shapes. You can apply the class round, oval, brackets, skew, and several others that will make all sorts of different cool looking shapes. So another way that Bonbon bon utilizes CSS3 is they make heavy use of CSS3 gradients. If we go ahead and look at these buttons here, you can see that there's a subtle change in color from the top to the bottom, and the way they're accomplishing that is with CSS3 gradients. You'll also notice that some of the buttons here are kind of glossy, and the way that they're doing that is by overlaying a gradient on top of the gradient that they already have for the color and you have a couple different material classes here that you can apply. There's glossy 
and there's also glass. Another neat thing that they're doing is they're using multiple backgrounds in CSS3 to apply a noise image to the gradient. So if we go ahead and just scroll down here, you can see that we have the WebKit gradient right here. And then we have this second background for a noise image, which is included with Bonbon CSS. Using a noise image like this really adds a lot of texture to an otherwise flat gradient. So one last thing I'd like to point out in Bonbon CSS is that they're actually using CSS3 transitions to do this kind of subtle hover effect. On the hover pseudo class, they have a transition to transition from the normal gradient to one that's kind of a little bit brighter here. Another neat way they're using transitions is in this morph class. You can actually transition from one border radii to another to create kind of this cool morphing shape. Bonbon isn't quite production ready yet, and it doesn't really gracefully degrade too well, but it's cool to see what's possible in CSS3. That's it for this week. Until next time, be sure to check us out at facebook.com slash doctype and follow at doctype TV on Twitter. And if you have a question you'd like answered on a future episode of Doctype, send us an email at questions at doctype.tv. And if you subscribe via iTunes or RSS or YouTube, you'll never miss another episode of Doctype. So until next Tuesday, remember that every great web page starts with Doctype. <laughs>